Hey everybody, Terry White here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at a topic that came up actually kind of by accident. And it's really how to animate a Photoshop layered file in After Effects. So recently I created a new social media kind of flyout. I think you probably just saw it. <laughs> uh, and, and I just basically put together the Photoshop file. Uh, made all my separate layers and layer groups, made all my social media, even went and found the right colors for Facebook and, and Twitter and so forth and so on. And then I put, once I put together the layered file, I was like, well, I don't want to just pop up on the screen and then go away. I kind of like all the things to slide out and then all the things to slide away when they're, when they're done. So I decided to um, animate it in After Effects. And of course, once I did that, people started asking, how did you create your new social media profile animation. So that's what I'm gonna walk you through right now. It's pretty quick and easy to do, even if you've never used After Effects before because you're doing most of the work in Photoshop. It's really not that hard to do this uh, once you have a nice layered file. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done. So uh, I'm gonna pop over to Photoshop and this is all it is. So all I did to get started with this, just for people that are saying, hey, you know, I don't, and, you know, I don't even know how to get started in Photoshop. Let's do a new document. And uh, I use the um, print and or film and video template. I did the 1080p HDTV. If you need one that's 4K or whatever, you can make that one. But I did that one. And the only difference is instead of using the template, which defaults to a white background, I changed it to be transparent so I wouldn't have a background at all. So that gave me the right document size and then I just built all my layers. So I um, I, create, uh, I used that first layer and I said, okay, let's make a rectangle marquee selection. And again, I, you know, I'm not making these exact size, but I got that one the right size. Then I said, okay, I need to fill it in with a nice color. I went and found the exact blue that I needed, but let's just fake it for now. And then once I did that, I hit option on the Mac, delete, or PC, alt, delete, or alt, backspace to fill it in. Then I deselected it. All right, so once I got it deselected, then I was like, okay, that's my first layer. That'll be the one for, I don't know, whatever, Twitter. Renamed it Twitter. And then I went and uh, typed my name on it in white text. And then, of course, once I got that all set, duplicated it. And then uh, that gave me the second one that all I had to do then was just pull it down, you know, space it apart, um, select it by holding down my command key on Mac, PC control key, and click on the transparency of the layer. That'll make a selection. Then all you have to do is, of course, pick your next color. And I'm just making these up as I go along because, of course, I've already got this all set. Uh, and then uh, option delete or alt delete or alt backspace on PC to make that one the right color. So on each one, I then went in and typed in, um, you know, whatever I wanted to go on that layer. So for my uh, Twitter, for example, it's at Terry White. Oh, let's make it the right, all lowercase. Terry L. White is my uh, actual Twitter. Let's make it left justified. And of course, let's make it white. So that it looks good on that blue background. And then you can make it whatever font you want, whatever size you want, so forth and so on. So that's how I started building the Photoshop file. And I'm just you know, creating it once, duplicating it, changing the color, so forth and so on. So now I'm gonna close this because this is just to show you how, to, if you've never created a Photoshop file from scratch, how you create your Photoshop file from scratch in the right size, um, and then creating your elements. And of course I use the uh, the logos that I got from stock, uh, Debbie Stock for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Got those all in there. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and then close this. Don't save it. And then show you the finished file. So the finished file, I actually used a gradient for the original uh, rectangle because that's what Instagram uses. They use a gradient. And I also organized everything in layer groups. So instead of having a group for the color or a item for the color, uh, a separate item for the text and a separate item for the logo, all separate in the layers panel. Once I put those three things in there, then I group them together in a layer group, which you can create that just by clicking the layer group icon in the bottom right. And of course, then that turn allows you to turn on, turn off and move the entire group. So that way um, it just keeps it nice and tidy, nice and neat. Um, and then you have your ability to go ahead and export 
the or save out the entire file. So once I'm done or once you're done building all your layers and all your layer groups, and I highly recommend um, you, you for After Effects, you make layer groups for the each individual item so that it's easier to animate the whole item as opposed to the individual. I have to move the logo, I have to move the text, I have to move the blue background. That way you get to animate the whole thing as one. So that's another reason why you want to, whenever possible, work with layer groups in Photoshop just to make your life easier so that when you head over to After Effects, all this separate stuff is treated as one, even though you can still edit it as separate items. Okay, once I did that, um, of course, to keep all the layers, you, you want to save it out and save it to your computer and you want to save it as a Photoshop file. That way you'll get to keep all the layers. So you're going to save it as a PSD. Um, I'll save this one out. I think I saved, I'll save this one out to the desktop. But you're going to um, save it out wherever you want and let's make a new folder for it so we'll know where it is. Um, PSD to AE. So Photoshop to After Effects, that's where we're going to put it. You put it wherever you need it, wherever you're going to know where it is, I should say. And then uh, that will keep all the layers, that'll keep everything maintained, and that way you can uh, come back and make changes if you want to, so forth and so on. So that's the Photoshop work. Once you get the Photoshop file looking the way you want, then it's time to head over to After Effects so that you can animate it. So I'm going to pop over to After Effects, which I already have running. And in After Effects, I'm going to create a new project. Now, once I have this new project, I'm, I want to create a new composition from the footage. So After Effects works with compositions. Those are like the timelines and, or sequences in Premiere. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition. Now, a new composition normally would just be blank. And then you bring items in and animate them. But we already have everything all ready to go from Photoshop. So we're just going to say new composition from footage. Click it, it's gonna then bring up a window asking me where is the footage you wanna bring in. I'm gonna to go to the desktop, oh, yep. And there's my folder I created, PSD to AE. And don't just double click and open real quick because there's some choices you need to make. So we're gonna select the file, we're not gonna be in a hurry. And then instead of importing it as footage, this is one of the first things we need to change, we wanna import it as a composition and more importantly, retain the layer sizes. So let me explain the difference between footage, composition, retain the layer sizes, and composition. You bring it in as footage, you're just gonna bring it in as one thing. So all three bars come in as one thing and you won't be able to animate them separately. That's obviously not what we want. We don't want footage. So then what's the difference between bringing it in as a composition and retaining the layer sizes or just a composition? We bring it in retaining the layer sizes, well remember, we made that big 1920 by 1080 window with all that empty space, and then the bars are over on the right-hand side. Well, if you bring it in as just a composition, then it will shrink it down to only the space, only the stuff that's on the layers themselves. So we obviously want the full size of our composition and retaining the layer sizes so that we get all that empty space too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit open, and you're gonna say, well, once it opens, oh, wait, hang on, there's one more window. Let me bring that window over. So it's saying you have a choice because if you use layer styles, you can make those layer styles editable. So like if you use the drop shadow or anything like that, you would be able to edit those layer styles or you can just merge them in. I didn't use any layer styles, nothing that I need to animate separately. So I'm just gonna go ahead and merge them. Now, nothing happened in the window, but it did actually bring in the composition over here in the project window. So if I look in the project window, there it is, my new composition, TW, social media flyouts, that's the PSD that we saved. Now, double click on it. When we double click on the icon, it all starts to come re become real. We can actually see what we're doing. We can actually see, um, we can actually see the individual layers, which you can click on, and these are the layer groups. This is why I meant put them in a layer group, because then they're that much easier to animate. And then there's one thing I wanna do while we're here. Because I'm gonna be dragging these things separately, I kinda don't wanna mess up the alignment. Like I wanna keep them aligned exactly where they are. So I'm gonna uh, hit Command R to bring up my ruler. And then I'm gonna pull out a ruler guy while we've got them exactly in place where we need them to be and put that ruler guy right there. 
so that when I animate them out, I know to stop at that ruler guy. So that's just a quick thing for me to do. All right, so now that we got our three layers, there's one for Instagram, one for Twitter, and one for Facebook, we need to tell all three layers that there's one property we wanna animate, and that's the position. You can animate the position, you can animate the rotation, you can animate the opacity, you can animate all kinds of attributes, but in this case, and let me show you what I mean by that. If I wanted to get to all the properties for Instagram, for example, that I can animate, I could twirl this down and twirl down transform, and there they all are. I can animate the anchor point, the position, the scale, the rotation, and the opacity. We only want position. That's the only one, we because we're just gonna have them slide out, slide back in. So we don't, we don't need them, we don't need to animate the opacity or anything else. So a quick way around that, so that you don't have to twirl each one down and go to them individually. So we're gonna go ahead and select all three layers. This is just a shortcut. And you're going to hit the letter P for position. So once I hit the letter P, notice it, it exposes position for each one. That way I don't have to think about, um, I have to think about twirling them down and finding position for each one. So it's just a shortcut. You can twirl them down and do them manually. But if you, if you're like, let's say you had 50 layers, you don't want to have to twirl down 50 layers and find position each for each one when you can just do it all as one. Okay. So now the next thing is to tell uh, After Effects, we want to do this over time. There's uh, two things we want to happen. Number one, I just realized that uh, your composition may not be the right length meaning that After Effects defaults to 30 seconds for a new composition if you don't do anything. That's not what I want. So I want to make sure that I go into my composition settings before we go any further. Composition settings up here under composition. And I'm going to bring that window over. And I just want to make sure that your composition duration is, and I mine is remembered from last time, 14 seconds, 29 or 29 frames. So basically 15 seconds. Yours probably says, if you have never changed this, 29, 29. So you want to change that 29 to 14, just so your composition, or 10, or whatever you want it to be. Like I picked 15 seconds. Yours can be as long, you can be 30 seconds, it can be 40 seconds, as long as you want this animation to take. So I figured I wouldn't annoy people with my social media more than 15 seconds. All right, so 15 seconds, mine's already set. I'm going to hit cancel. You would click OK after you make a change. Now that we know the composition from zero to 15 seconds is right, we know that we got our three layers and we expose position for each one, great. Now we're gonna go ahead and click the stopwatch, which is the little icon next to position, and we're gonna, that sets a keyframe, these little blue triangles. It set that little blue triangle for each layer at zero seconds. So at zero seconds, we're now gonna tell it what to do. Well, at zero seconds, it shouldn't be visible at all. You should not see anything. So I'm gonna take all three layers that are selected and simply drag them off. Now, if you're dragging them and it's not, you know, like you're, you're worried you're gonna drag them up or down, then hold down the shift key so that you can drag them in a straight line across. So now at zero seconds, meaning the animation first comes up, you don't see anything. And that's where that first keyframe is gonna be set. Now we're gonna say, okay, for, um, for, now we're going to move our time, our playhead, our, our, our time thing here, our playhead. <laughs> we're going to move it to like one second. So at one second, what should have happened? So at one second, well, Instagram should be there. So I'm just going to pull Instagram back out. And I got that nice um, uh, uh, ruler guide to line it up on. And that's where Instagram should be at one second. So at one second, if I don't do anything else, this is what happens. I pull it back and I hit play at one second, Instagram comes out and it stays there for 14 more seconds because I didn't tell it to do anything else. And then it, it would just end. We obviously want to do more than that. So we want the next one to come out a little bit later, not at one second, but maybe one and a half seconds. So you pull your playhead to wherever you want that to be, my case, about one and a half seconds. And then we're going to pull the next one out. So we're going to click on the next layer Hold down the shift key after you start dragging it and line it up with the, um, with the ruler guide. So then that one plays. So now you've got this going on. So we hit play and they start to come out and boom, at one and a half seconds, that one happens. 
Now I'm gonna go a little bit past two seconds, maybe two and a quarter, two and a half, somewhere around there, because I, I want my third one to come out now. So I click on my third one, drag it out, hold down my shift key so I just to keep it straight. And now I've got my animation all set, at least the beginning part. So the beginning part, all three come out. This is what it would look like. If we hit play, space bar, they all three come out and they would technically, it would go all the way to the end. 15 seconds takes forever when you're waiting for it, by the way. 15 seconds goes by quick any other time. But when you're waiting for it, it goes all the way to the end and then it just starts over again because you didn't tell it to do anything else. Okay, so we don't want that. We don't want the, it to sit there forever and then just disappear. We want them to sit there to a certain amount of time and then go away. So how do we do that? How do we tell it to sit there to a certain amount of time and then maybe back off the screen like they came on? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the playhead all the way over to maybe, uh, you know, somewhere around 13 seconds. Now here's the here's the the rookie mistake I'll call it that new After Effects users will start making. They said, "Oh, I know what he's going to do next. Now that he's at 13 seconds, he's going to start pulling them off the screen." There's and you're 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 almost right. There's one thing you need to do first because if I pull it off the screen now, what what that's telling After Effects to do is that from two and a half seconds to 14 seconds or 13, wherever I am, start slowly over 13 seconds time pulling it off the screen. Because it, it came to two and a half seconds and stopped, and it stays there until you tell it to do something else. But if the next thing you tell it to do is start going off the screen, it doesn't know to start going off the screen at 13 seconds. It just says by the time you get to 13 seconds, it should be off the screen. So we have to do something first. We have to duplicate the last keyframe for each layer at this spot to say, don't do anything from two and a half seconds to now. Then you can start animating going off. So all we have to do to duplicate that keyframe, these last three keyframes, is there's a keyframe button all the way to the left of your timeline at the bottom here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. There's this little keyframe, click, click, and click. So now I've set three keyframes at that spot. So what that tells it to do in this spot is from wherever you start it and end it at two and a half seconds or two and a quarter seconds, don't do anything different until this spot. That's what that meant, meant. So now we can start animating off the screen. So we can start saying from here, I can say by the time it gets to maybe um, here, the first one will start to go off. And keep in mind, um, it's it's really the amount of time it's gonna take for two seconds for these to go off. So that seems like a long time. So maybe you wanna set those three keyframes at 14 seconds and animate them off quick. And by the way, you can pick up keyframes. So if I said, no, I, I changed my mind, I wanna pick them up, move them over, then you pick them up and move them over. You can move them over or delete them or undo them and reset them any way you want to get them over to this spot in time. So I'm just going to pick them up, move them and say, yeah, no, nah, two seconds to animate off is too long. I, don't, uh, I want them to animate off within a second. All right. So now that I got them in place, in other words, go here and stop. I just want to make sure I got them all lined up. I think I do. All right. So now we're going to start animating them off. We're going to start saying, okay, a little bit past 14 seconds. Uh, since Facebook was the last one to come on, let's let, make it the first one to go off. So now it's off. And then we're gonna say a few, uh, you know, less than a second over. We're gonna have Twitter go off. All right. And then last but not least, near the end or right at the end, we're gonna have Instagram go off. Just hold down shift key to move it over. As long as it's off screen, it doesn't matter how far. But if you move it way off screen, then you're telling, to, that's how much time it's gotta to take to move that far. So it might move quicker or slower than you want. Okay, so here's the whole animation, playing from the beginning. I go all the way, pull the time head all the way back to the beginning, hit the space bar, all three come on, and all three just sit there for 13 or 14 seconds or so. And then once we get to that first keyframe where they're locked in place, 
then they start animating off quickly because we told it to animate off in a second. And then it starts playing the animation over again. So that's it. That's our animation. Now, of course, you can still move them. You can move these keyframes. You can say, well, that, that they went off so quickly. Maybe I don't want them to go off that, far, that fast. So I can select all three keyframes, move them over, and then spread this time out. Maybe I say, you know, that let's give it a little bit more time in between them before they go off. So now going, going off the screen would look like this. Yeah, they don't go off as fast. So the keyframes represent a position in time, literally in this case, a position in time. How, how close they are together is how fast they move, how far apart they are is how slow they move. And you can dictate that even after the fact, like I just did by moving the keyframes on the timeline where you want them to be. So just like we started with three keyframes, locking the position off screen, then we move them on screen, then we lock the position on screen, then we move them off screen. So that's our full animation. Now the question is, now that we got our slick animation ready to go, how do we get this out of After Effects so that we can use it in other programs? Maybe you wanna use it in Premiere Pro. Maybe you wanna use it on your uh, live streaming platform. Uh, OBS or, or Wirecast, maybe you want to use it on your meeting platform. However you want to use this video, there's one caveat. You want this video to be transparent so that when you put it on top of other video, we don't see a black background. We don't see any background at all. Just like we started with a transparent layer in Photoshop. That's why we did transparent instead of white. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one thing. We're going to go to Composition and we're going to go to... Um, we're going to go to add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. So Adobe Media Encoder is a separate application that comes with Premiere and After Effects, so you already have it. And what that does is it takes the animation we just did and gives it to us in um, the Media Encoder so that we can, uh, and it just popped up, here's a Media Encoder, so that we can dictate what format, what, how many formats we want. You can duplicate it in here. You can export it as many different ways, as many different sizes as you need. So if I had a 4K one, but I needed one for 1080p, I can make, scale it down. One for 720p, I can scale it down. So I can start with the biggest one and just keep animating or scaling, exporting it out in different sizes, I should say. Now, what format should you use? Mine's already set. You might be tempted to say, well, I know H.264 is one that I've heard of and, 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 it, and it could be the one that you would use for any other kind of animation. But in this case, we're going to use QuickTime. Now, if you were, the reason we're gonna use QuickTime is because just like JPEG doesn't support transparency, but Ping does when you export out Photoshop documents, same thing with video. They're not every format supports transparency. So we need a, we need a format that would support transparency. So we could use, um, we could certainly use um, uh, QuickTime because it does support transparency. If you're on a Windows platform, I would probably start looking at, let me see if I see it here. Uh, Targa supports a transparency on the Windows platform. So if you're on Windows, look into Targa. I'm, you know, I haven't looked in Targa in a long time, but look, look into Targa. I know it supports transparency. And if you're on Mac, uh, let's use QuickTime. We're going to use this preset, which is Apple ProRes 444 with Alpha. And the with Alpha is the important part. That's That means transparency. So whenever you see the Alpha term, and one of your export presets, presets, that means use transparency. If you don't see alpha, then it may not be using transparency and you end up with a black background even though um, there was no background to begin with. All right, so just like you end up with a white background when you try and save out a JPEG in Photoshop with uh, transparency, it just makes the background white no matter what. All right, then we can tell it where to put it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just click on the name. This is dictating where it will be saved. So I'm gonna save it to that same folder. It will automatically save it out as a movie or .mov file. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And then we just hit the play button up here in the upper right hand corner uh, to actually start the export. So when we hit play, this is a pretty 
relatively quick animation, so it shouldn't take that long to export or render this out. But it's um, connected to the project, because keep in mind, this is a separate application. So connected to the After Effects project and rendered it out just that quickly. So the time it takes to render is always based on your machine, how fast it is, your GPU, how much you've done, how big your files are, what codec you're using, how many times you're going to export it. All those things matter. But in this case, 15 seconds should export pretty quickly. And that's it. So now we have our video file. If we go out to the desktop here, there's my desktop. And actually, there's my computer. And now let's go to my desktop. And if we go to that PSD to, um, to AE folder, there's the .mov file. If I hit spacebar to play it, there it is playing it. And I see my playhead going across. And it's gonna, there's no audio because we didn't put any audio in. So it's going to be a silent movie. And then as soon as it gets to around 15 seconds, it starts to go away and it's done. So that video can now be used anywhere video that supports transparency can be used. And it's already the right size for HD. If you need 4K, then you start with a bigger Photoshop file. So I hope this helps those that were like curious or afraid or thinking that it would be hard to animate a Photoshop file. It's really not. Most of your work is in the design in Photoshop. The animation part is pretty simple because you got a timeline and you're just saying, like you could start with a fully composited, beautiful scene and then you could just go into After Effects and pull it all apart at one at zero seconds. And then over time, animate the layers coming back on, whether it's position, whether it's opacity, whether they're rotating in or spinning in or whether they're coming in at an angle. Because each time you move it off and move it back on, there's a path. So you could even um, use your pen tool in After Effects to make curves in that path. So there's all kinds of ways to animate um, you know, techniques you can use. There's even presets um, for animations that you can have it do like ghost effects and sparkle effects that are already there. But that was the quickest, easiest way to show you how to get started animating your Photoshop files in After Effects. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.